All right, so this is day number seven. Seven, right? It's a selfie stick. Seven. Yeah, it's like day number seven of training, and these are the guys that have been showing up the most to the class. Shayla, Sean, and Ismael. <laughs> and we're going to do airport training today. <coughs> This is Ian, he's our instructor today. He doesn't talk much. My notes. Sure. And that's 101 West. South. I mean, I mean uh, 37 West and 101 South. Correct. Golden Gate Bridge, uh, 19th Avenue. You just cross out 28380 there. Cross that one out too. 19th Avenue. Two eighty. Three eighty. It's going to be 29, 80, Bay Bridge, 101. What's that? 37. 37. Oh, 29, 37, 80. 20, uh, Sorry, yeah, I forgot 30. You guys know 29 what you're doing. 37. Yeah. Thank you, Walt. Yes. Yeah, no, it's, it's important the Oakland Airport is going to be 37, 101, 580, Richmond San Rafael Bridge. It's funny, you being from Richmond, you call it the San Rafael Bridge. Yeah. <laughs> I, I always call it the Richmond Bridge. Uh, 101, oh, I'm sorry, not 101. It's 580. You're 101 580 and 580. to 80, 880. To the airport. Wait, so from Richmond to Oakland, it's 37101 Arrivals is to the left. That is departing the airport and arriving at the airport for your passengers, not you. I want you guys to notice over here to the left. Hourly parking, that is where you go in. Just stay to the left-hand side, go in the left gate. You will push the button and pull a ticket. When you do an airport transfer, you will get $6 in petty cash. You should, in your envelope. Make sure you have that petty cash. So, over there again is the pay gates to get in. You wanna be in the far left one? That'll take you right up to level five where that Lexus is. Push the button, take the ticket, drive up and park. We will see that shortly. This is terminal number one. Terminal number one is Southwest Airlines, Delta Airlines, US Airways, well, maybe not US Airways, yep, US Airways still. US Airways is moving to terminal two. It was just bought by American Airlines. Nice. Frontier Airlines, I think, and Delta, yes. That's Terminal 1. Southwest is the first part of the terminal. U.S. Airways, Frontier Airlines, and Delta Airlines. I just went to a meeting here at the airport a month ago, and they're going to be tearing down Terminal 1. It's going to be all screwed up. Figure it out. Sorry. It's the best I can do for you. Coming into Terminal 2. Terminal 2 is Virgin America and American Airlines. Like I said, U.S. Airways was just bought by American. I don't think that it's going to stay U.S. Airways. I think it's being absorbed into American. But keep your head on the swivel. There's signs everywhere to tell you where to go. But oh, you're, pro you're a professional driver. You should know where you're going. Yes. Terminal 3, United Airlines. That's it.
United has a premier class that's like their platinum or whatever. They get dropped off here. Uh, but drop your people off where you can drop them off. Right? I mean, if that's all filled up, don't double park like all these guys. Come up here. This second section is normally a little bit more open. Try and drop your people off as close to the sky cap. See the guys there that are checking their bags at the curb? Try and get your people as close to the sky cap as possible. says no u-turn and there's the cones and the barricade that's the turnaround thing that they were talking about earlier in anything under 20 feet long you can turn around in there do not turn around in there in a limousine so anything under 20 feet is a sedan or a suburban other than that you got to come out get on the freeway to turn around I guess that sucks. I don't know how else you can do it. Yeah, that's pretty crappy. brought snacks go ahead and bring a snack with you just so you don't starve to death while we're walking around the airport pull up as far forward as you can to be courteous to other drivers don't park in the red zone don't block the crosswalk that's a nice ticket first level the top level <coughs> we never come in here you drop people off you don't carry their bags in for them there's no parking out there you can't leave your car you unload the bags, and they'll go over all that tomorrow or Thursday or whatever. Grab their bags, put them on the curb, have a safe flight, take off. Give them their copy of their credit card receipt, give them, you know, whatever you have them. They shouldn't need to sign anything at that point, but make sure you do everything you need to do in a professional manner, but you don't come in here. There's one exception to that, and we'll cover that later. Domestic. Inside curb. All vehicles. What, what was that for domestic again? Drop offs. Domestic. Inside curb. All vehicles. All vehicles. International. Inside curb. Sedans and suburbans. Courtyard. Courtyard? Yeah. When you guys are done, let me know. Courtyard A and G. Buses. G. All right. Oh, 
I'll explain what that means later. Pickups. Domestic. Inside curb. Sedans and Suburbans. Courtyard one, three, and four. Buses. International. Sedans and Suburbans, outside curb, whichever word you want to put it, outside curb, sedans and Suburbans, whatever. So at the International Terminal, pickups are at the outside curb for sedans and Suburban. Courtyard A and G for buses. Doesn't make sense to you guys now. It'll make sense to you guys by the time we leave here. Everybody got all that? What was the courtyard again? A and G. For international? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Everybody got all that? So you should have uh, drop offs, domestic. All vehicles inside curb, international, inside curb, sedans and suburbans, courtyard A and G for buses, pickups, domestic, inside curb, sedans and suburbans, courtyard one, three, and four for buses, an international terminal pick up outside curb sedans and suburbans courtyard A and G for buses Does everybody have all that you guys ready to walk sure. yeah. got to walk and choose Does that make sense to you guys so all of your drop-offs are over here inside curb is that other lane over there make sense yeah so all your drop-offs at the domestic terminals are all going to be on the inside curb, closest to the terminal, all along this side. Now, that all depends where you're going to drop off to what airline you're going to. It's questions you're going to ask people when you get them in the car. Questions? Not yet. Okay. Let's go inside. So, that's it for drop-off. You guys get lost in this group of people going on a cruise. I think it's a princess cruise. So, when we are doing a pickup in a bus, we'll go sit at the cell phone lot and we'll wait for a phone call. Dispatch will call us so your people are ready at courtyard one, they're ready at courtyard three, they're ready at courtyard four. You come into whatever courtyard they tell you to, you pull in, there's a little cop in a little booth, they'll write down your license number, your license plate number, add mask for your insurance, might want to look in your baggage compartment, whatever. Just do what he tells you to do or she tells you to do. Then you back into one of these spots. Code five green. Back into one of the spots, load your people up, and go. We have a 30 minute time limit in the courtyards. The way that we do things, you should never exceed that 30 minute time limit. Because they call us, say your people are ready, you pull in. Your people are normally standing there, you get out and go, you guys going to the wine country? You're like, hey! And then you get them on the bus and you leave. Doesn't take 30 minutes. Okay? Back inside. Say, oh, follow me, courtyard one. And they'll call when they have all their bags, say, we're on our way to courtyard one. So I'll be right there. Come into courtyard one, get the people on the bus, take off. Your attention, please. The US does Now you can also have greeters for sedan transfers or suburban transfers. And with those, what it is, is somebody will greet. They'll call you, say, I got the client. And I'll cover this in more detail here. Uh, they'll call you and say, okay, uh, United Airlines, door four. Say, all right, come in. You go in, you just drive right into the airport, pick up people, and you leave. You don't have to come in and greet people. That's what the greeter is for. They greet the people for you. If the dispatch tells you you have to go in and greet, 
which is what most of them think stopped. Yeah. Uh, if the dispatch tells you you have to go in and greet, which is what most of your transfers are going to be, you come in, you park on level five, which is where we're going right now. I'm going to show you level five, the parking area, where we park, what to do. Uh, you come down the elevator, you go into the terminal. And it goes, and I'll show you where to go stand and everything here in a little bit. So, those are the options that we have. Now, you also may get tagged to be a greeter at the airport. I'm sorry. You get a manifest, you get a whole list of every flight that's coming in and what they are, and you go stand there with a the cute little sign and you greet everybody. <laughs> and then you're the one that's calling people up going, oh yeah, got your people, we're coming in, come in domestic, you know, uh, Southwest Airlines door four. And then they'll come in and you're just there to schlep bags and that's it. And greet people, basically. So, parking level five. Where do we park? Level five. Level five. What do we park on level five? Sedans and suburban, right? And? Oh, limos. And limousines. That tells you which airlines or which towers or elevator shafts or whatever you want to call them. That's which airlines they are. Okay. So AB is that one right there. You see it says AB on it. It's for Air Canada, Alaska, Hawaiian, JetBlue, and WestJet. Now I didn't mention Air Canada, Alaska, Hawaiian, JetBlue, or WestJet when I told you terminals one, two, and three. Which terminal do you think they would be in? International terminal. Even though they're domestic flights, they're in the international terminal. We'll cover that again later, but I just wanted to bring that up to you guys. Tower B, Frontier Southwest US Airways. What terminal did I tell you Frontier Southwest and US Airways were in? No. Three. Terminal one. Southwest, US Airways, Frontier and Delta are all Terminal 1. See, C, Tower C says Delta, right? So, to be as close as possible to your airline, if you're going to Frontier Southwest or US Airways, you want to be by the B Tower. Delta would be the C Tower. Now, I want you to look here, and I want you to see how busy it is at Tower C and Tower B, right? When I pick up at the airport, Terminal 1, I park over there. See how empty it is? Don't take two spots, but park a row back. There's nobody around you. You're not going to get your door dinged. You're not going to have a problem getting in when you get back. You're not gonna, hopefully, you won't have somebody that parks this close to you next to you. Only when you're picking up at A&B, right? I do it every time I pick up at Terminal 1. If you would like to park, if you're picking up at Delta, if you would like to park at C, by all means, please park at C. I park at A and B. The only time I don't park at A and B, or F and G, it's the same thing on the other side, is when I'm picking up at Terminal 2, which is the D elevator shaft. I know I'm confusing you guys right now, but we'll, we'll, we'll work on that. You guys understand what I'm saying? You do have a little bit more of a walk if you park over there and you're picking up at Delta. Because Delta is way over there. But you know the car is going to be safe. So from way, here, oh, go ahead. Is there any way when you see him, you can just walk over here and tell him, you know, wait for me, I'll get the car and drive to you? Can you do that or is it better just turn? 
That is what we do, but that's not how we do it. When, wait, I was gonna go over this later, but I'll go over it now. When your people come down out of the escalator, you're gonna stand there with your cute little sign that says whatever their name is or whatever the group is. They say, hey, that's me. You say, okay, great. My name's Ian from California Wine Tours. Nice to meet you. Uh, did you have any check bags? They say, yes. All right, your bags are coming out at carousel number four. I know this because I already checked. Your bags are coming out at carousel number four. We'll head over there. When you see your bag, point to it, and I'll grab it for you. They get their bags, or if they don't have any bags, they just didn't carry on because they're smart. You say, all right, great. Here's what I'll do. I'll set you guys up right outside curbside. You guys just wait there for me. I'll run up and get the car. I'll be back in a few minutes. They sit down. I'll show you where you set them up. And then you run back up here by yourself, get in the car, leave, come back, and then pick them up. That's what they were talking about, about you can't turn around. Sometimes they have that turnaround closed, or if you're coming, you know, that's where it gets screwed up. So we'll cover that again later. Anybody have any questions about this parking area? All right, I want to show you guys something. I hate that. limos our sedans are limos the bmws we have are limos but they are not over 20 feet do not park in this spot this is for stretches because you're not going to fit a stretch in another parking spot right now let's say you're picking up and these spots are both taken i would go park over in the way far back of a and b and take two spots two spots this one and the one in front of it <laughs> not, not four spots <laughs> diagonally or two or three spots going across traffic two spots forward and yeah all right let's go back downstairs and walk around if there's not a sign for an airport pickup you don't need one for an airport drop-off because you're meeting with the hotel you should have a sign for an airport pickup if you don't Ask for one. Hey, Sean, or hey, Marlene, or hey, whoever's working dispatch. You know, uh, can I get an airport sign, please? Say sure. They'll give you a sign. You should also have in your driver's bag blank airport signs, blank run sheets, blank airport signs, because you'll be doing an airport drop off when you're done with your run. What do you do? What do you do when you're done with your run? You just drop people off. Code three. Code one, code two, code three, right? We haven't been over that yet. Really? Um, I'm talking to a joke. Uh, so, we, we heard it briefly, but not. Uh, I, he didn't describe it, he just said. A code one is when you're at the yard and you're going to your pickup location. Code two is when you're at your pickup location. Code three is when you dropped your people off. That's letting dispatch know that Office tells them your driver will meet you at baggage claim. So we don't meet them at the carousel because when people are at the carousel, they're watching bags. They're not looking for somebody dressed very nicely holding a sign with their name on it. So what we do is we meet them at the bottom of the escalator. You guys heard me talking earlier, hopefully you heard me talking earlier, about door numbers. Every door in this airport has a number on it. So if you were had a greeter and the greeter called you and said, Terminal 1, door 7, they'd be somewhere around door 7. And just to be nice to us, they made them go in order. Door 1, door 2, door 3, door 4, door 5, door 6, door 7, door 8, door 9. Hey. I know, right? Who would have thought that they would have done yeah, something nice like that? 
Anybody remember what elevator we came down just now? Like ele elevator from uh, AB Park. From AB. <coughs> come down. This is where they will come down for Southwest Airlines, Frontier Airlines, and U.S. Airlines. They come down this escalator. See this escalator going down here? Maybe you want to take a guess where that goes? Where it goes? It went down. To the parking garage. This is the tower that was labeled B. You go down here, you can take that walkway underneath, take the elevator up to level five, you're at that tower that says B. The next time we're gonna go where the baggage claim comes down, we're in Delta, if you took that escalator, you continue down, we go to C. Make sense? Yeah. We're, we'll actually take to the C one. But I just wanted to show you. So, what you would do, me, because I know what I'm doing, I know that that is all Southwest. So if I have somebody coming down Southwest, sign says here, baggage claim for Southwest, that away. I stand right here with my sign. They would come down, hopefully try and make eye contact with everybody that comes down so that they know that you're paying attention. Don't, man. Don't be this guy. You'll see it. We'll probably see it today. There's the guy that's standing there. Make eye contact with people. Smile at people. How you doing, guys? When people come down, don't be afraid. You don't have to if you don't want to. Don't be afraid. So, oh, I forgot to show you. There's a board over there. It says the arrivals. There's another one over there. I'll show you that one. So you know that there's three Southwest Airline flights coming in. One coming in from Dallas, one coming in from LA, and one coming in from Portland. I don't know. So you know you're picking up the guys from LA, right? You see some people coming down the escalator. Excuse me, sir. Uh, what, what city did you guys just fly from? Oh, we just flew in from Portland. All right, thank you very much. A couple minutes later, excuse me, sir. What airline did you, what airport did you guys fly from? LA. So I know that this is my group that's coming down right now. This is the LA group that's coming down. So now I know I really need to pay attention. Now, sometimes you'll say, you'll say you're from the LA flight. All right, you're standing here, standing there, standing here. There's nobody else coming down. Okay. Just keep standing here. You know when the flight's going to land. You have your app on your phone. Did, did they go over the apps on your phone? Um... You'll go over the apps on your phone and stuff. Uh, you'll know when the flight came in. You'll look at the trackers. You'll know what's going on. Uh, sometimes people will stop. You have something to eat. Use the bathroom. Whatever. Uh, now let's say you're standing here for a while. Okay, let's say you've got your people. Right, baggage claim's going to come out down there. Baggage claim number one. So I'll walk down with you right there. Just so you guys know, it is about an hour and a half to Napa or to Sonoma. So if you'd like to use the restroom, there's the ladies' room right there. And the men's room's right down there. That way you're not halfway to where you're going. Hey, you're going to the potty. Right? So, let's keep going. Now, that being said, hey, don't no get caught staring at the staring at the smile and one person just come off. Yeah. <laughs> Baggage claim, Frontier and US Airways. So if I have somebody coming from US Airways or Frontier, I'd stand here. Because they're gonna come down and they're gonna walk this way. So I'm standing on this side, right? Southwest goes that way, so I'm sending on that side. See? They're picking up for Southwest. They're right over there. DMC. So this, that's what you're doing, guys. You're basically just trying to stay in eye range of the people that you're trying to greet. Now, you may have a guy standing here, and another guy standing over here, and another guy standing over here. That's fine. Don't stand in front of the escalator. It's okay to stand here, here, here. You don't want to be in the way, but you want to be seen. number on your airline. You may not have the city that they're flying out of. You find out from that board. Come outside, I want to show you something.
So you greet your people. They came out right there, baggage clear, sell 10. We walk out here. You walk out here, you're not gonna wanna set your people up right here. Why not? Too much traffic. There you go, there's too many people standing around. You've only seen the people for 30 seconds. You don't remember what they look like. So what you wanna do is you wanna set them up a little bit farther down. Or, I wanna show you this as well. gave us our own lane to pick people up. Nice. So set them up over here. Now, I want you to notice there's the green sign. See what the green sign says? See what the green line around that bench? That's the only area you're allowed to smoke in. So you can ask people if they're a smoker. Some people just spent six hours on a plane. First thing they want to do is smoke a cigarette. Know where the smoking areas are. Green sign. There's one down there, green sign. There's one way down there, green sign. Also, you want to ask people if they're a smoker? Because if they're not a smoker, they're not going to want to stand next to the smoking area. Right? Okay, no. Today is Suburban to stretches. Anything with a TCP number is a limousine. Oh, okay. So we can pick up here, Sedan, Suburban to stretches. Go inside. So let's say I picked up the 10, Carousel 10. And I know the smoking area is there, I know the limo area is here. I'd drop them off right here outside door 14-ish. So you're still accessible to the limo area. However, they're not standing right next to the smoking area. Right? You guys bored yet? No. <laughs> so another thing that I want to bring up to you guys, when we walk people through the airport, and this is going to have to do with this next one. At Delta Airline, there's a door a door down at the end. What do they tell you guys when you pick up at 10, you walk out that first door right there? You don't want to set your people up there. That's where everybody's waiting to get picked up. So you pick your people up from Delta. You never want to walk your people outside. Pick them up over there, walk them inside to that door and set them up outside, outside that door. Mm. It's a lot quieter in here. It's not cold in here. It's not hot in here. It's just nice. You may have Southwest Airlines from Los Angeles, Flight 387. You may have Southwest Airlines, Flight 387. You may not know where it's from, so you can come up here and go Southwest, 387, LA. Okay. Come on from LA, on time. I don't know what that means, but you're going to have the time on your paperwork. Okay, let's go over here. Got some more DMC people picking people up over here. Where they're standing is where I would stand. Maybe a little bit more forward, but that's fine. Now, for these restrooms, the women is straight ahead, the men is to the left down that hallway. Now, I want you to look around, and I want you to see that it's a zoo. So if you say, how you doing guys? My name is Andrew Driver today. Uh, we're gonna be at baggage claim. 17. Uh, we're going to be in about an hour and a half, two hours to get to Calistoga today. Um, you guys need to use the restroom before we get going? They're going to say yes. Go stand down there with them. Once you have your people, do not let them go or you will lose them. And then you feel like, wow, it happens. So stand down there in front of the, just stand in front of the bathroom. Then, like I said, you say, okay, is you can go to the baggage office. There are baggage offices for each airline in the baggage claim area. And you can go in and say, hi, you know, my name's Ian. So you go into the baggage office and say, hey, my name's Ian. I'm from California Wine Church. I'm here to pick up a guest. Uh, I was just wondering if you could tell me, please, uh, which baggage claim. Delta 348 is coming out, and I can tell you. Now, the important thing with that is what does the baggage office deal with? Baggage. 
What's the thing that you with the most? I guess maybe uh, lost, bags. lost bags. So Sean, have you ever lost a bag flying on a plane? Are you, are you happy about it? No. So most of the time they deal with pissed off people. All the time. That's all they deal with. I've dealt with pissed off people all day. Nothing but pissed off people all day. If you go in and you're nice to them. I didn't notice your feet were clicky before. Are those comfortable to walk in? They like, are actually. Okay. I'm a sandals person. I'm used to it. Sandals person. Oh, sorry. Sandals person. When you're leaving the parking area, you go through the pay gates to leave. You must go through the pay gate that says cashier. There's going to be three of them. There's fast track. Don't use that one. There's credit card. If you want to pay with your own money, by all means, use the credit card one. But we gave you $6 in cash to pay for parking, so you need to go to the one that says cashier. Unfortunately, the cashier is normally on level three. So you go down and around until you get to level three, and it'll say there's signs all over cashier level three, cashier level three, cashier level three. The reason it's normally on level three is because that's where the parking headquarters office is, it's level three. There, normally the signs right there where it says exit says uh, cashier on level three. So since it's not there, I'm assuming there's a cashier over there. Now it says credit card. No, there is no cashier up here, so you got to go down to level three. All right? Under 20 feet. Oh. So read the sign. These ones are over. These are over. Right. They kind of screwed me up on that one. And you have a Vegas feel with this terminal tech. Where did you come from? Speak of the demo. Virgin America and American Airlines. Right. Virgin America, American Airlines. All right. There are two escalators here, and because there are two escalators here, stuff gets screwed up. There's an escalator way back in the corner over there that nobody ever uses, but there's a chance that they might. They come down from, because they come that way, and then they come down the escalator, or they could come down this way too. So these two guys right here are making some money. They're down here, they're greeting some passengers. Uh -oh. Now I'm going to tell you what I do, and I'm going to tell you what you're supposed to do. I stand down here. Right where these guys are. Get your arrivals board. Check what's going on with your arrival. Now, what you're supposed to do, or what Joe told me to tell you guys to do, is you do this. Did you come up here to the meeting point? Because there are more escalators that people can come down. Sometimes people don't come down this escalator. the meeting point you stand up here everybody that comes out of terminal 2 comes out of those doors so if you're standing right here they're not gonna, well they, they'll miss you trust me I've made eye contact with people and nodded at them and they just kept walking and then turns out 45 minutes later that's them anyway so here's the meeting point they come out greet them here take them down the escalator take them to the baggage claim restrooms are right there People have stopped coming out from your flight that you're picking up because you're asking people, where'd you guys, what city are you guys from? Where are you guys coming from? Uh, call dispatch. Dispatch will say probably, well, did you call on the courtesy phone? Because we're not supposed to just call on the courtesy phone without asking dispatch first. Dispatch will go, did you call on the courtesy phone? So you call on the courtesy phone. See the white phone? 
white courtesy phone. If it's a courtesy phone, they're all over the place. You pick it up and you press zero. I think. Paging. Star 1124. So you're going to page them. They say, who would you like to page? You say, Steve Jones, whatever the guy's name is, right? And then they'll say, what would you like to page them to? Terminal 2, Carousel 2. This is right there. Where, you know what I mean? In that way. Then you see in the sign over there, the right panel says visual paging. The name will pop up there, and somebody's voice will say, Paging Bob Jones, Terminal 2, Carousel 2. That's a good one. Yeah. That's it. So that's what you do. Then, but if you want to wait 30 seconds, you can stand on the other side where there's nobody standing there. And you don't have to elbow people trying to get your bag. Right? So if you have the option to help your people to go to somewhere on the baggage claim, don't go to a crowded place. So same thing here, guys. Uh, you want to walk the people outside. Set them up curbside. Tell them I'll be back in a few minutes. You notice I'm saying few minutes. I'm not saying I'll be back in five minutes. I'll be back in three minutes. Because if people are like me, I'll go five minutes. All right. Took you eight minutes to get here. That's why I say a few minutes. I'll be right back. I go get the car. Now, I want to bring this up to you guys. You'll get some people, and they'll say. So I'm going to set you up right outside curbside. I'll go run up and get the car, and I'll come pick you up. You'll get some people that will go, you know what? I've been sitting for the last six hours. I wouldn't mind going for a walk. Can I walk with you? Can they walk with you? Sure. We'll see what happens. Sure. It's all right. So in that case, I tell them, all right, not a problem. It is a little bit of a walk, though. Just in case. Most people, they're asking to walk with you anyway. They're going to be like, sure. And you just go, all right, follow me. And you just take them right to the car in the parking lot, get them in the car, and leave straight from there. So you can't say, unfortunately. Nope. <laughs> it's a little bit of a walk. I just tell them, I just tell them, I'll tell them, fine. Okay, Joe. <laughs> but, yeah, I just want to let you guys know a little bit more. Right there's the blue side. Courtyard 3. So what, what terminal is Courtyard 3 used for? Um, no, no. One, three, and four uh, buses. Oh. No, Terminal Three no, wait, is wait, United wait. Airlines. <laughs> which courtyard is Terminal United? Three for? Is which, which courtyard, courtyard would you pick up? Which terminal would you pick up in Courtyard Three? Slide over here. Which terminal did we just walk out of? Two. Which terminal three. would you pick up in Courtyard Three? Three. Which terminal no, number? Two. Which terminal oh. number would you pick up in Courtyard 3? <laughs> terminal, th terminal 2 is picked up in Courtyard 3. Terminal 1 is picked up in Courtyard 1. There is a Terminal 2, but that's all construction. So there's four courtyards, numbered courtyards. There's two no letter. Anyway, Courtyard 1 is for Terminal 1. Courtyard 3 is for Terminal 2. Courtyard 4 is for Terminal 3. Now, coming into the courtyard, this Coach 21 bus just came in here. You come into the courtyard, you come driving around, you see courtyard three, you pull in here. Remember I told you there's a police officer in the box. You pull up. Do not just pull directly into a spot. Stop at the stop sign. The guy in the box will come out, he'll ask for your license. You might want to look in your luggage bay. He's going to write down your TCP number. He's going to write down your driver's license, uh, your license plate number. Fine. Once he tells you, he'll tell you which spot to park in. Park in that spot. Your people should be out here. They get in the bus, you back up, and you leave. Simple. 10, 9, 8, 7. Coming out already, yeah, since United has its own large terminal, there are multiple meeting points. Okay. So what you can do is the 
meeting point for gate 60 through 69 is up there. You can go up there. You can stand here with these guys. Now, unfortunately, follow me. There is another escalator that comes down for United, and we don't know which escalator the people are going to use. So you could be waiting for your guy here, or your girl here, or group here, or you could be over at the other one, and they could come out of the other one. Evans is a completely different monster when it comes to the airport. Your drop-offs for the domestic terminal are all going to be the same. Inside curb. Upstairs, inside curb. Your pickups, see the blue sign on there that says airporters. That's where you pick up. There's a pickup at terminal one, pickup at terminal three. One, two, three, and the international terminal. If you look over here, you see it on the other side. I don't know if you guys can tell. There's a red and yellow checkered curb. That's taxi. Before that is a green and white checkered curb. That's where the airporters pick up, is the green and white checkered curb and the signs that say airporters. I have to tell you guys that. That's it. Okay. This, it'll tell you what gate they're supposed to be parking at. Notice this one says meeting point for gate 70 through 90. Anybody remember what the other meeting? Watch out behind you guys. It was 60 through 69. This one says 70 through 90. So if you see the gate on your app on your phone, you can take an educated guess to which which carousel or which uh, escalator you want to go to. However, be prepared to be wrong. I don't know what to tell you. Here you have all your arrivals. They'll tell you what baggage claim they're going to. That doesn't matter. They'll come out this one and they'll go to baggage claim 10 all the way on the other side. So stand right under here, uh, underneath the sign, underneath that sign with your sign, and reach people as they come out. All right? Restrooms there, ladies' rooms over there. You can't see it, but it's over there. Any questions? Is ready to do the international tour? Which airline is in Terminal 3? Which one? United. Oh, the smell. So you come down here and you turn right, right here. And if you're going to courtyard four, you turn right. You talk to the cop in the box. Cop in the box. He'll tell you, yeah, go ahead, park, or give me your license, or whatever they're gonna do. Sometimes they ask for stuff, sometimes they're just like, yeah, get out of here. So you come back up, because it's easier to back in and then drive out than it is to drive in and back out. Anyway, pick up your people and get the hell out. Now, if you were to continue straight, Underneath the building there, that would take you to Courtyard G, which is where we're going to get picked up. So I will show it to you guys, but I just want to let you know, this is how you get to Courtyard G. What? No matter what. Yes. There are international parking lots as well. I do not use them. I park at AB or I park at FG. So I'd come up FG right here, and I go up this part, this escalator here, and get the internet. The other side of the international terminal. Off for an international departure in a sedan or a suburban. There you go. That's it. Now, the international terminal is set up a little bit screwy as far as the airlines go. You can't see a sign here. 
There are signs and there's like four airlines on each side. It doesn't matter where you drop them off. It'll say, you know, Air Canada, Air China, Lufthansa, and something else. Even if you can't get to that sign, just get over there. When I drop my people off at the domestic terminal, I'll drop them off and I'll say, hey guys, just head right inside, check-ins right inside the doors. Here, I say, head inside, good luck to you. Because this is how the counters are set up. Like this. So these counters are going to be something, and then they could be different. This is all united, it just so happens. Because I can read the sign. But these airlines are going to be slightly in a different place. So I just drop them off wherever I can up here and say, check it's inside. That's it. All right? All right. Where do we pick up our passengers when they arrive at the international terminal? In a sedan or suburban? So right over there where the Evans bus is? Look, look around. He's got a TCP number on his bumper. I mean, he's a limousine. On this yellow third here, where it says limousines. That's where you pick up the international criminal. There was another bus here when he pulled up. I, I, I know, I could tell by looking at it what the situation was. Just pull all the way up to the front. Suburban or a limousine? Uh, inside her. Nope. I didn't look at my nose. I was just trying to see if I could. I want everybody to look and visualize that, not right now because we're going to get crushed by the circular thing. Over there, where it says limousine, outside curve. Now, the international terminal for international flights. There's two places you can pick up. You can pick up at A, and or G. you can pick up at G. Now, there's courtyard A and G. There's garage A and G. And there's arrivals exit G and exit A. We're at the wrong side. It's opposite. A is there, and G's here. Courtyard G's over there. Parking garage G's over there. Courtyard and parking garage and exit G A are all over there. So here, you can see the flights that are coming in, the flight number, where it's originating, and what its status is. And you notice these two from Tokyo are both in custom. Unfortunately for you guys, when we do an international pickup, they could come off the plane and walk right out. Or they could be in customs for two hours. So you got to stand here. Two hours. Two hours. Custom means they give customs coming uh, through customs. The La airport. Uh, yeah, immigration. Yeah, <laughs> kind of. So they're just checking to make sure you didn't bring anything in, make sure you're not a terrorist, making all that stuff. So what you do is you're gonna come try to stand as close up to your can. Anybody have a loose sheet of paper? I'll rip one out of you. We'll, we'll see somebody doing it down there. You're going to stand here with your sign. Stand here and hold your sign. I'm going to tell you what they're going to do, and you'll be able to see there will be somebody doing it down there. People will take their pen, they put the paper here, and they clip it like that, and then they go and they stand over there. Don't do that. We're paying you to hold the sign. Hold the sign. So you stand here and hold the sign. When they, The good thing is, when they come out of customs, they already have their bags. 
should already have their They should already have their bags and they already have a pushy cart thing. And you take them and you put them right outside to the limousine area. Remember I told you there's domestic flights that come into the International Terminal too? Alaska Airlines, JetBlue, WestJet. That's it. Hawaii? Hawaiian Airlines, good job. Yeah, you saw a sign, didn't you? No. Oh. Uh, so when they come out, this is where they would get their bags. So that's why there's baggage carousels here. Same over there. That's it. Now, to get to Courtyard A, you go down the escalators underneath. Courtyard A is like underneath us. We'll show you that later. I don't. The reason for that is because you're standing next to baggage claim, what happens if they just have check bags? Walk right by you. They walk right by you or they might not even come out, they just walk straight outside. To the upper level, because they don't know where they're supposed to go. I never I never been to San Francisco before. Who's been to the Atlanta airport? Anybody? Yeah, the place is screwed up. If you don't know where you're going, you're gonna get lost. You know, you're just gonna get off the plane, you're gonna take the shuttle, you're gonna take that train thing to the baggage claim, and you're just gonna walk outside. You're like, uh, okay, now what? That's why we need to meet people as soon as they come out of baggage claim. Or as soon as they come out of the terminal. When you go down the walkway, you'll be at AB. Because you really don't need to know how to get there. Because you just need to know how to get there with a bus. You don't need to know how to get there on your feet. Because that's a short merge right there. So when you come in to the airport to pick up, you're going to be on that road over there, you're going to take the exit that says McDonald Road. You're going to take McDonald Road. The road is now underneath us. Stay in this lane right here, Walt. It comes in this road right here to our right. They merge up. When the road dead ends, you make a left into courtyard A, where it says bus only. Courtyard A, you would come up, stop, check in with the security guard, just go left. See, most time they're lazy and they don't do anything. You would pick up, park in one of these spots here, pick up, go ahead to the stop sign and merge back onto the road. These signs say authorized transit vehicles only, active passenger loading. <clears throat> you have a 30 minute time limit uh, to the right, hard right. Once you pick up, you can hit that lane over there and that'll take you and you can go around the top level of the airport just to get out of the airport faster. But for the reasons of this, I'm showing you how to get to courtyard number one. You can come in this way to get to courtyard one. Or you can come into arrivals, stay in the right lane, and turn right, and you'll see it on the left is the road that comes in, and then you go straight ahead into Courtyard 1. We're just going to drive right past it. Well, okay. Right here on the right is Courtyard 1. Which terminal do we pick up at Courtyard 1? Which terminal? Which terminal do we pick up at, you see this lane right there? Oh, terminal 1. one. 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 Yeah. Terminal 1, Courtyard 1. Very good. Now... We'll drive straight. See the stop sign over there? Yeah. So, to alleviate traffic here, guys, they've set up this outside or inside, whatever way you want to put it. They've put up this lane here. You can drive around the airport, and there's a cut in to each terminal. You'll see them. The 
here's one of them for courtyard or for terminal number one. Here's one, and then the next one's gonna be for two. Green and white checkered curb is for Buses. Evans Airporters, oh. which is Evans. <laughs> Where do you pick up in a bus for courtyard one? Outside curb. No, I messed that oh, up. You said bus. Where do you pick up for a bus at terminal one? Oh, terminal one? Pick up for a bus. Courtyard one. Courtyard one. Where do you pick up for a bus at terminal two? It's under construction, isn't it? That's courtyard two. That's under construction. Where do you pick up for a bus at terminal two? Courtyard three. Courtyard three. So back there, there's that sign, the little cutout said terminal two. You would take that. Remember, courtyard three is right over here. Woo! Told you to watch out for those taxis, didn't I, guys? Yeah, they. Courtyard three is right over there. That's how you would get in there. Airport Express is picking up at a green and white checkered curb. That means they are a. Airporter. Airporter. This is terminal three. Where do you pick up for a sedan or a suburban or a stretch at terminal three? The limo spot. Uh, green and white checkered. Incorrect and incorrect. Kind of incorrect. Inside curve. At the inside curve. Anywhere along there. Where do you pick up for a bus? Uh, turn right here at the stop sign. <laughs> Where do you pick up for a bus at Terminal Three? Outside curve. Nope. Is it eight? Oh, courtyard oh, number. Courtyard three. Four. Four. And then go courtyard four, courtyard G. Definitely gonna have to this video. <laughs> yeah. Right here on the right is courtyard G. Nope. A. Nope. Four. Four. Nope. <laughs> you you hit it. You just it now. <laughs> That's where you go into courtyard four. Now I tell you guys to stop at the little box and check in with the guy for that one. Pull all the way up to the stop sign because you don't want your ass in hanging out in the traffic. So you come through here. Remember I pointed it out to you guys, you come straight through here. Yeah. And courtyard G is on the right. Do not come in that little walkway right there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, that was good driving though. Look how small that was. <laughs> that was. That was that's, that's he got good. some skills, man. All he was right, just trying uh, to show off. Cell phone lot, please. That's class A. Oh, the class A driver right there. That's right. You get the big rig where you get the big rig. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can get it in. <laughs> no problem. So that's how you get in the courtyard G. You turn right at the stop sign. You turn right at the stop sign. You're in courtyard G. I go this way. San Fran. 101. Yeah. I think we'll have to see the truck. Hi, Yeah. San Bruno. San Bruno Avenue. So if we were coming to the airport for a pickup and we're going to the cell phone lot, we'd be over there going that way on 101. Take the San Bruno Avenue exit. You would turn left and go across the freeway. Everybody remember what I was saying earlier? And it was like two hours ago. And they've crammed a lot of information into your face. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's a fact. Right here. So you would come across this way which we are turning left to be coming across this way. This lot on the left with all of the sedans and stuff parked over there, uh -huh. we can park in that lot. However, that is, it is a limousine lot and it is a, uh, I forget what they're called, Lyft, Sidecar, and Uber lot. That's where they have to park, Lyft, Sidecar, and Uber. We do not have to park there. There is another limousine lot for us. I do not want to park next to all those assholes. They are all assholes. Anybody drive Lyft, Uber, or Sidecar? Uh, did you record that? <laughs> I'll beep it out. No, no, there's, I mean, it's, a lot of the guys are just regular people who want to drive and they have no idea what they're doing. They're just a regular driver. They're not trained on much other they than... They don't train. Yeah. So, I don't like to park next to those guys. You can. What you need to do is you make a U-turn here and you go into that lot. If you want to. You want to run in there? 
Yes. This is the cell phone lot is directly across the way to the left. You, or you turn right here and then you turn left in here. You see there's the K rails in there, the white rails. Mm -hmm. eh, we're not really supposed to go in here, but whatever. We're small enough. So this is a cell phone lot for limousines, sedans, suburbans, and stretches. You come in here, you see where all these black cars are? Those are all limousines. So you come in here on the other side, you see the blue sign, limousine staging lot, way bill required. Anybody know what a way bill is? That's a way bill. What's that called? Oh. Run sheet, reservation sheet, trip sheet, way bill, all the same thing. Park in any of these spots. There are two big spots over there for stretches. Do not be the guy that parks the sedan in the stretch spot. Or if you do and a stretch comes in, move. Yes, and then I'll go over there. Why is it called a cell phone lot? Because people sit here, and then when people get off the plane, they call and say, I landed on the cell phone, and then they come and pick them up. That's why it's called a cell phone lot. So inside of that special box, inside of the special box, is where we can park. Over here is where buses come and park. This is where we would come and park with this. This place here, anybody like Filipino food? Pretty good Filipino food. Their cheeseburgers are decent too, if you don't mind not going to the bathroom for a week. Uh, we park over here. So back in over here. Any size vehicle we got. Technically, these are minibus spots on the left, but the blue Super Shuttle guys park there, so we just park over here. Unless I feel like being a mean person, I'll go tell their supervisor that they're all parked in my spots and I want my spot. And then he'll tell them to move. Or she'll tell them to move. Let's go ahead and cut through to the left. You know what though, it doesn't seem like we'll rarely even come over here. No, we come over here a lot. Really? Yeah. I mean, if we're picking up, cool. um, you know, we're parking on level five. Okay. I don't even see the need for coming over here. Parking at the park airport this. is expensive. You can't park this on level five. Yeah, we can't park this on level five. Oh, okay. Doesn't fit. Remember I said six foot six? Mm -hmm. I know that because somebody called me one time and goes, can we? Is this, is this suburban under six foot six? And I went, I think so. If you go fast enough, it will be, right? <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so a suburban is under six foot six, so it can't go up there. Um, I remember I went out and I was like, I'm, I'm now? Uh, yeah. Uh, Oakland Airport, please. Uh, I'm six foot, and it's only that much bigger than six two, six three. Yeah, anyway. Um, so when you're picking up here at the airport, you want to get down here and you don't want to go to the parking garage until 15 minutes before the plane lands. Got it? Why? Because you only got six bucks. If you get down here an hour early, you can go sit in the... Just go pay to pay sit in the parking lot for an hour and 45 minutes? Now, general rule of thumb. From the time that the plane lands, 30 to 45 minutes later, you will get your people in the car. Because when the plane lands is when the wheels touch the ground. That's not when the people get off the plane. That's not when the people get their bags. That's when the plane lands, when the wheels touch the ground. From that point... Until you get them in the car, 30 to 45 minutes. So, when do you want to go park on level five? When you're in a sedan or suburban. What? When do you know it's time to go park on level five? Oh, 15 minutes before the uh, plane lands. 15 minutes before the plane lands. Now not required to have a cell phone so you're not required to have these apps but they will help you greatly doing your job felt like that was just their whole family didn't they <laughs> Brady Bunch uh, I wouldn't say Brady Bunch I'd say Amish Paradise <laughs> you just see the people driving uh, flight aware kayak any of those apps track flights. Anybody have an Android phone? Everybody has iPhone? The 
can't do this with your iPhone. United Airlines Flight 362. things that shoot lasers. Yeah. Doesn't it look like them? That's where he got the inspiration. I just want to know what drugs he was on to think that I want to make those things walk and shoot lasers. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's cool. Hotel pickup, I take Hagenberger. If I'm picking somebody up at the airport, I take Hagenberger. There are a couple places you can stage here on Hagenberger while you're waiting to pick your people up. One of them is the cell phone lot. It's very small. There's not a lot of parking spots in there, so I don't go there. You can park in this parking lot here. This is Walmart at Hagenberger, in and out at Hagenberger, whatever. You can park here in this parking lot. The other place is on Leet Road, L-E-E-T Road. I will show you how to get there when we're done with lunch. Now, if you are doing a hotel drop-off, or I'm sorry, airport drop-off, you are picking people up at a hotel or a private residence and you are taking them to the Oakland Airport, I take 98th Avenue off the freeway. The reason for that is there's less stoplights than it gets you directly into the airport. So does Hagenberger, but 98th is a little bit more direct. We, When you leave the airport, you're on, pick up, you said? you're on for a hotel airport drop off, I take 98th Avenue. For an airport pickup, I take Hagenberger. When we leave the airport, we'll be on 98th Avenue. Less stop signs. Stop lights. <laughs> lights. No yeah. stop signs. Stop lights. Lot. Lock your car. Don't leave anything on your seats. Oh, Oakland. Uh, there's a Chipotle over there too. Everybody ready? All right. Buses pick up and drop off at 4D, as in dog. I gotta come for a meeting right here next week. This week on Thursday. Pickups. Buses pick up and drop off at 4D. Sedans, sorry. What is 4D? You'll see. Sedans, suburbans, and stretches. Pick up and drop off curbside. So you notice we are in the left lane because we are on a bus. We are going to 4D. So pick up in what lane? Curbside. Left. Left -er. <laughs> More leftist. You guys can see, can you guys see out the front of the bus? Mm -hmm. See the hanging signs? Yeah. What do they say? 4C, 4D. Where do we pick up and drop off in a bus? 4D. 4D. So where are we going? 4D. Okay. <laughs> yep. Evan's bus too. Nope, nope, nope. Drop us off. Drop us off. Oh, you're going in? Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Totally misunderstood that. 
Well, you can't pick us up or drop us off at curbside in a bus. Gotta be <laughs> a 4D. Know, I didn't know you were doing that. <laughs> Just hang out here. If they tell you to move, go ahead and move. Okay. Oh. Southwest Airlines. Terminal 1. Everything else. International flights, domestic flights, whatever flights. Terminal 1, except for Southwest, Terminal 2. So you have all the airlines, then you have a stoplight. After the stoplight, what does it say? No, baggage, claim. baggage claim. So when you drop off at the Oakland Airport, you drop off before the stoplight. When you pick up at the Oakland Airport, you pick up after the stoplight. Does that make sense to everybody? Say that again? When you drop off at the Oakland Airport, Drop off before the stoplight, where all the airlines are. When you pick up, you pick up after the stoplight, where the sign says baggage claim. And we do the same thing here in Oakland as we do in San Francisco. We, eat, we wait, we ate. We ate all the food. We sure. wait. The whole thing there, Marco? All right. <laughs> <laughs> in Espanol. In Espanol. No, I'm not. A Deutsch. A Deutsch. <laughs> All right, guys, you done? Any questions? Nope. Mm, good. All right. Uh, I will not. Well, I might see you tomorrow afternoon. If not, oh. All right, bro. Let me give you guys a business card with my number on it so you guys have any oh, questions. Okay.